Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video, I'm gonna make a prediction, a full prediction of all Mr. Olympia contenders in the Open division. I will try to be brief, not to spend too much time explaining every single place, but I will just try to be brief and to give you all the names, the way I think it's going to play out, and we'll see in a couple of days. How well did I do? How much did I get right? So let's go with the 16th place, and that's gonna be Max Charles. This guy is a genetic freak and we expected so much from him a couple of years ago, but now he doesn't look that good on stage. He is always a little bit watery, he's never completely sharp and dry, maybe it happens this time around he comes dry and surprises us all. If he shows up the way he was showing up for the past couple of years, I don't think he will do much better than 16th place, the last place. 15th place, Mohamed Shaban, a new guy, don't really have much to say about him, he won the Portugal Pro, that's how he qualified for the Mr. Olympia, his glutes were a little bit soggy, a little bit fat, but he had the shape, he had a really good structure, really good back, and overall very good complete physique, but not very shredded, if he comes peeled to the bone, he may do better than this, but as for now, 15th place for Mohamed Shaban. 14th place, Lucas Osladil, this guy never won a pro show, not this year at least, he qualified on points, he was very persuasive, he competed so many times, and he always presented great conditioning. But he doesn't have the best structure. His structure is, let's say, just weird. He doesn't have that fullness, that roundness that most of these Olympia guys have. He has good presentation and he knows how to show his strength and he's always very, very conditioned. For that reason, he is at the Mr. Olympia and he will not be the last place, if you ask me. But we'll see what happens, maybe he surprises us as well. 13th place. This is a Mr. Olympia debut for this guy, Patrick Moore. He's a newcomer. I think he's pretty young. I'm not really sure exactly about his age. He can do maybe even better in 13th place, but we'll see. Anyways, he looked amazing at the California Pro, where he actually won the show and qualified for the Mr. Olympia. He's a new guy, so I think anything better than 13th place in my prediction video is not really going to be the best idea, but it may happen. It may happen, but I think 13th place is about realistic. Alright, so we come to the 12th place and that's gonna be Michael Lockett. This guy is a freak. In the gym he looks like a Mr. Olympia. He has super round muscle bellies and very hard conditioning. That's what he's known for. Although his legs not very good, his back also not super wide, but with that conditioning, with that muscle maturity, with those arms, with that chest, with those details all over his physique, I think he will give us a great show and uh, take that 12th place. 11th place on my list is Akim Williams. This guy also never won a show, but he was always second or third or something like that against some of the very, very good guys. Now, Akim is a beast. He is huge. He's enormous. But he's not very shredded. He's almost never conditioned. For that reason, nothing better than 11th place. I don't think he will crack the top 10. It could happen if he comes just a little bit sharper. But based on previous performance, I don't think it's gonna happen. I think he's gonna come a little bit off, a little bit soggy, and take that 11th place home. Now we come to the top 10. And 10th place, the last guy in the top 10 is going to be John De La Rosa. Now John, he could be 6th place. It's possible. If he comes really, really shredded. All these guys in top 10 can do that. So let's not talk about that anymore. I'm just gonna give my prediction. All these guys are very, very close and they can all win the Mr. Olympia pretty much if the rest comes off and uh, if they come completely sharp and full and everything. If they peak extremely well. But based on their previous performance and uh, considering the fact that I have to give you a prediction, that I have to give you exact spots, I would say John De La Rosa 10th place because I don't think he will be better than Juan Morel. Juan Morel... Horrible quads, non-existent pretty much, very, very small legs. That's a huge weakness for him. But the upper body, the upper body is so much better. And I'm telling you, if he had better legs, he would be fighting for the title. His upper body is so full, so vascular, so huge. He has one of the best chests of today. He also has enormous and very full, very freaky looking back. It's just the quads that they're not going to allow him to do better than ninth place. Which is also amazing for the Mr. Olympia, right? The guy that's going to beat him simply because of the quads, nothing else. The guy who won the Indy Pro is Steve Kuklo. Now, Steve, he comes conditioned. He knows how to come conditioned. But he's never, you know, detailed enough. He doesn't have the deep separation. His muscle just looks dead. 
So nothing better than eight plays for him, but he is very complete. He doesn't lack pretty much anything. And he's also conditioned. It's just the, 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 the life in that muscle that is missing. So for that reason, Steve Kuklo, eight plays. Seven plays. Seven plays is going to be disappointing, but I think that's going to be Cedric McMillan. I'm really cheering for this guy. I'm a huge fan of his, of his physique and everything. But based on what I saw on his social media, his face doesn't look remotely ready for the Mr. Olympia, for any kind of stage for that matter. And he was working like the day before the Mr. Olympia. So we can be sure that he's not super focused. Also, based on his previous performance, at the Mr. Olympia, he's never on. He's always off. Last year, he was 8th place. This year, I don't think he will move up more than just one spot. Now, again, I said before, he can win the Mr. Olympia if he comes, you know, shredded. But I don't think that's gonna happen. I think he will be a little bit off and take that 7th place home. Top 6. So we are entering the top 6 right now. 6th place, in my opinion. This is a huge wild card, but I will say it, Luke Sando. That's right. At this year's Arnold Classic, Luke was able not to beat only Sergio McMillan and a bunch of other very, very good guys, but also Rolly Winkler. And that just goes to show how important conditioning is at these shows. All these guys have enough muscle. They all have great structures and proportions and everything, everything you can think of. That's why they are at the Mr. Olympia, at the best stage of all. Conditioning is what sets them apart. And if Luke was able to do it once, Cedric was never able to do it, Luke did it at the Arnold. He did it pretty much again at the Tampa. Not very good, not that good, but still very, very good conditioning. Now, this time around at the Mr. Olympia, I think he will push the envelope super hard. He will use the erratics or who knows what, a lot of them probably, to come perfectly peeled, dry to the bone. And guys, did you forget? This is his Mr. Olympia debut. He was never on the Mr. Olympia stage. Taking 6th place, cracking the top 6 at your very first Mr. Olympia is a huge achievement. It's amazing. It's extraordinary. It's crazy. It's going to be something to talk about for months after it. So 6th place for Luke. As far as our 5th spot, I will go ahead and say it's going to be Harry Chopin. I think today nobody has the quality of the muscle like Harry. Nobody has those deep separations like Hari has, especially in the chest and the quads, in his arms as well. Not so much in the back. So because of his back, that's why he's not gonna win a Mr. Olympia. If he had just a little bit better, drier, crispier back double bicep and back lat spread, back lat spread not so much, but back double bicep, yeah, that's a problematic part for Hari. If he had that, he could win the Mr. Olympia. But unfortunately, no. Although, fifth spot for somebody who is first time in the, not only Mr. Olympia, but United States, that would be amazing. And I think that's going to happen. I think he's just super impressive, too impressive not to crack the top five. And now we come to fourth place. And I think this year that's going to be Dexter Jackson. Hadi, Hadi is awesome. Hadi is great. Hadi is very, very impressive. But from the back, he is nowhere near as sharp as the blade. Now, Dexter is going to be 50 in like two months or even less, and that makes it even crazier. As you age, your skin gets thinner, and that's why he has great conditioning. That's one of the reasons. But he was also always known for being the most conditioned guy up there. He was never the biggest, but he always had an amazing conditioning. And from the back, he is so detailed. It's in, it is insane. It is insane. And I don't think anybody can match him in that regard. Especially not Harry Chopin, not Luke Sando, nobody, nobody. He was amazing at the Tampa, bro. He was amazing. And for that reason, fourth place for him. Now we come to the third place and that's going to be Bonac. That's going to be William Bonac. Now this guy is going to beat Dexter because he's fuller, he's bigger, he's, he's just, you know, more complete. Dexter is great, but Dexter is much smaller than them, than these top three guys. He's just much smaller, especially this year. He was always smaller than most of them guys. I mean, he was able to beat Jay Cutler when Jay was much bigger than him. But I think uh, Bonac is also very conditioned and much bigger, much fuller. But I don't think Bonac will be able to beat the top guys because he doesn't have the best structure. 
his structure is fine. I mean, he wouldn't be top three in the world if he had really bad structure. But it's not good enough to win the Mr. Olympia because top two guys have better structure. And now we come to the top two. And the runner-up at the 2019 Mr. Olympia, in my opinion, is going to be Rolly Winkler. I know, I know, Rolly has so many fans. He's the people's champion. Everybody wants to see him taking that sando and lifting it up in air and taking it home. But I don't see that happening, really. Because not only that he's not able to continuously show great conditioning, but also the lack of details in his lower back. I think that's going to be too exposed by Brandon's back. Now, granted, Rolly Winkler has better legs. And if he came much sharper than ever, if he came better than he was in 2018, which is also very, very good conditioning, but it looks like he can be a little bit sharper. If he really did that, then I would say Rolly is going to win it. But based on their previous performance, which is what I am basing this whole list on, I don't think Rolly will bring that super crispy conditioning. And for that reason, his lower back is not going to look that good. Now, his legs are going to be bigger than Brandon's, but I still don't think it's going to be enough to win him the Mr. Olympia. Although it's a jump. Last year he was third. This year he lost to the Arnold. He was fifth place. But I do think at the Mr. Olympia he will be shredded. He will be very, very good. Good enough to be the runner-up and to take that well-deserved second spot at the Mr. Olympia, which is also an amazing achievement. It means that Roll never stopped progressing. Maybe next year he actually wins it. Who knows? Maybe even this year. But this year, actually, in my opinion, the winner of this 2019 Mr. Olympia, your new Mr. Olympia champion, is going to be Brandon Curry. What Brandon was able to bring at the Arnold Classic 2019 was really extraordinary. It was really good. It was complete physique, with great back, with great arms, with great symmetry. The only problem were his legs, but they were also very conditioned and he was able to show them in the best light possible, good light enough to grant him victory over Bonek, who had amazing legs. Brandon Curry is not the perfect Mr. Olympia, but compare him from 2018 Mr. Olympia to 2019 Arnold Classic. The improvement he made was just jaw-dropping. In such a short time, he was able to come much fuller, much, much fuller. And now he had a whole off-season between Arnold and Olympia again. So if he was able to make progress from Olympia to Arnold, who is going to tell me that he wasn't able to progress from Arnold to Olympia? I'm pretty sure he did that. Because he's the favorite to win it. He knows that very well. He is not letting the foot off the gas pedal. Not right now. No way. No way. He's gonna push the envelope as hard as possible. Because he's so close to being the best bodybuilder in the world. And it seems like he improved his legs. Now he will be conditioned. But I'm sure he will not push for conditioning. I'm sure he will remain some of the fullness, because his legs could look much smaller if he came completely dry. So I think with that conditioning, he will still be more conditioned than Rolly, and more complete than Rolly. Because I think Rolly's back is much worse than Brandon's legs. I don't think Brandon's legs are that bad, especially in the side poses. And I also think he made improvements, because this man is known for making progress year after year, year after year. Rolly not so known for consistency, but again, if Rolly comes completely shredded, he may win the Mr. Olympia, but I don't think that's going to happen. If I'm going to make a prediction video as I am making, I'm going to tell you that I think that Brandon Curry is 2019 Mr. Olympia winner. What do you guys think about this prediction video? Tell me down below in the comment section. Do you think I got it right? Well, we'll see in a couple of days. Anyways, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. And if you want to see more Mr. Olympia updates in the next following couple of days and all kinds of bodybuilding stuff in the years to come, please subscribe to my channel. All the best, guys. Bye-bye.